Hey everyone, this is Sarah with RegisteredNurseRN.com and today we're going to be going over fetal heart rate decelerations. In your maternity class or for the OB when you're studying for NCLEX, you will have to know the basics about fetal heart rate decelerations. There's three types that I'm going to go over and in this video I'm going to hit the highlights of things that you'll need to know for your test and lecture and for the NCLEX. And I've made it really easy and thought of some clever ways in order for you to understand this material. But after you get done watching this video, be sure you go to our website, registerednursern.com and take the free quiz that will test your knowledge on the heart, fetal heart rate decelerations. We have diagrams that you'll have to know whether it's early or late or variable, and you'll have to know the causes and it'll really test your knowledge and prepare you for your exams that you'll have to take in nursing school. Also, we have a bunch of NCLEX quizzes, dosage and calculations quizzes, personality quizzes, every type of quiz you can really think of. So go there to get some free quizzes. So let's get started. Okay, we have three different types of decelerations. We have early, late, and variable. First, I'm gonna go over the three types of decelerations, just explain the difference of how they look, give you an understanding, and then I'm gonna go over them individually and hit the highlights of things you'll need to know for your exam. But first, let's go over these grid lines and these squiggly lines and explain what it is and what it means, because it may definitely look foreign to you, because I know whenever I first seen it, it looked foreign to me. So the first thing you need to remember is a normal fetal heart rate. A normal fetal heart rate is 120 to 160 beats per minute. So engrave that in your mind. On the top of these tracings, these are the fetal heart rates, okay? So tops are fetal heart rates. Bottom is mom's contractions. What this is showing us, we're, it's able to tell us when mom's having a contraction and how the baby's heart rate is responding to that contraction. These little numbers on the side, because fetal heart rate is at the top, it measures the heart rate. You have 240, 210, 180, 150, 120, and so on. And then down here at the bottom, these are numbers measuring how strong mom's contractions are. They're measured in millimeters of mercury, and it goes all the way from 100 to 20. So it's telling us how strong those are and how the baby's heart rate is responding. So first, let's go over early decelerations. With the early deceleration, before, whenever you start looking at your tracing, you need to look at mom's contractions and compare them with how the baby's heart rate is responding. Okay, mom's having a contraction. See how it's peaking up through here? And we're looking and baby, whenever mom has a contraction, baby's heart rate is go, is, was baseline and then it's just being affected and going down just a little bit. And it's at the same exact time that mom's having a contraction. It's mirroring, they're happening together. So we know the reason that baby's heart rate is dipping just a little bit, but it's staying normal. It's staying about the 130s, because 120 is right here. A normal heart rate's 120 to 160, so it's okay that um, she's just having early decelerations. The key is that mom's contractions are mirroring the baby's dip in heart rate. So you have contraction, contraction, then you have heart rate goes down, goes back to baseline, goes back down again when mom has a contraction, it goes back up whenever mom's not having a contraction, back to baseline, and then it dips again whenever mom has a contraction. Okay, that's early deceleration. Next is late deceleration. The key with this is you once again wanna look at mom's contractions and see how baby's heart rate is responding to mom's contractions. Our baby's heart rate is starting out in the 150s, that's normal. And we see that mom has a contraction, but whenever mom has a contraction, baby's heart rate isn't really responding until after her contraction ends. Here's her contraction and then, mom, and then baby's heart rate goes down. And we notice that again, mom has a contraction, baby's heart rate's still at baseline, not really responding, and then it responds after mom's contraction. This is concerning, this is not normal. So it's confusing between late and early, right? How do you tell the difference? The key to tell the difference on this, whenever you see it, is that mom, whenever mom has a contraction, that's when baby's heart rate is going to respond to it. Because what you're having in this problem with late decelerations is you have utero placental insufficiency. So that's causing that. The way I remembered it in nursing school is that I remembered it as an upside down U. 
I knew it was different than early because it's mirroring. It's like a mirror. You flip the mirror and it absolutely looks like mom's contraction so i knew it wasn't early but for late it wasn't mirroring and in order to differentiate if it was early late or variable i memorized that it was an, a u u means it was caused by utero placental insufficiency so i knew that it was late deceleration so that's how i remembered that but always remember that mom's having a contraction baby's heart rate's not responding at all it's staying at baseline, and then after mom's contraction's over, that's when you have the dip, and it keeps going like that. Now, variable. Variable decelerations. This looks a lot different than the other ones. Do you not agree? Because look, it's not uniform. Late and early were uniform looking, so that's another key to how you know it, if it will be variable. This can ha The baby's heart rate will respond at different times because what's happening is that there's cord compression. So we're looking at mom's contractions, she's contracting, and baby's heart rate is just all over the place. It dips down, she contracts, it goes up, and it's just everywhere. So how you can remember this, this is a really clever way. Someone shared this with me. In order to remember variable, because the baby's heart rate is just really jumping ever, everywhere, it's gonna cause little Vs. For variable, starts with V, and you're gonna see Vs on your baby's heart rate. So that's how you can remember variable. Now let's go over these individually and let me highlight the points for you that you're gonna to have to know for your NCLEX and for your maternity lecture class. Now let's start at the beginning, back to early decelerations. Out of all the three types, early decelerations is what is normal. There is no interventions required. You're gonna to expect to see this when a woman's in labor. What it is, is the woman's having contractions and whenever she's contracting, the uterus is con squeezing that baby and the baby's being compressed up against the pelvis or the soft tissue like the cervix. And whenever that happens, that just causes the fetal heart rate just to dip just a little bit. And we wanna make sure, of course, it doesn't dip below the normal, anything less than 120. So you're just gonna see right whenever that mom has a contraction, the baby, it's gonna mirror the mom and heart rate is just gonna dip a little bit right whenever that contraction happens. So it's completely normal. It's the only normal one out of the three. Now, let's go to late deceleration. Okay, in late deceleration, what is causing this? This is usually a big test question. You'll have the moms having late decelerations. What is the cause of this? The answer is placental insufficiency, meaning that that's not giving, it's insufficient, it's not giving the baby enough nutrients and oxygen for whenever mom's having a contraction. So remember, the key with this, mom would have a contraction, nothing would happen to mom's heart, I mean to baby's heart rate, until after the contraction was open, um, over. Think of this like a delay. Um, the placenta and the uterus, it's, it's insufficient. It's not doing its job. And so everything's slower. So whenever the mom's having a contraction, it's not really affecting the baby's heart rate until afterwards because it's insufficient. But I think the best way to remember it um, so you don't get it confused with early deceleration is that it's going to make a U, an, uh, a U. So whenever it does the U, you know that if the U's not matching up with mom's contraction, it's not mirroring it, you know that it's late deceleration because it's different than variable. Remember, variable is gonna form those little V's and it, the baby's heart rate's really scattered and all over the place. It's not nice and uniform like this one. So that's how you remember that. With this, it's non-reassuring. That means that it's not a good sign. So you're gonna need to do some interventions. Next, and the last one is variable deceleration. So let's go over that one. Okay, the last one, variable deceleration. To me, this was the most easy one to pick out on an exam or on a test. Usually, whenever a teacher or a professor gives you an exam question on variable compressions, they're gonna ask, what's causing this? The cause of this is cord compression. What happens is either your cord is maybe prolapsed, it's wrapped around the baby's neck, or it's being compressed up against something, and when the baby turns or the uterus contracts, um, it decreases blood flow to the baby. So that's why you see these drastic drops, and this is not good. Always you need interventions. So remember, with the two decelerations that you need to intervene on is variable and late. The only one that's normal is early deceleration. and 
Again, this can happen at any time. It doesn't necessarily mean mom's contracting. That's when you're gonna see a response in the baby's heart rate. For instance, look, mom's having a contraction right here and the heart rate really isn't doing anything. And then after the contraction, it's moving. It's, it, it comes and it goes. So it's not uniform like our late and early decelerations. So that's something you really need to remember. So that was that. Okay, so we went over fetal heart rate decelerations. Now go test your knowledge on registerednursern.com and type in the search fetal heart rate deceleration quiz and take the quiz or go up to the top of the toolbar and click quizzes and it should be the first one at the top. And I hope this video really helped you prepare for your NCLEX and for maternity nursing. And if you like it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more teaching videos. And thank you so much for watching and have a great day.